Hello folks, it's been a fairly stressful last couple of weeks here at Camping Astronomer HQ, albeit the weather for the second half of March has been incredibly mild, um, very sunny, and the skies have been very clear. Um, so given all the stresses and strains of the uh, past weeks, I thought the other day it would be nice to sit out in the garden and just uh, look up at the stars and the heavens. And uh, whilst I was doing that, I thought I'd take a photograph of one of the most iconic objects in the night sky. So um, I hope you'll join me and see how I got on. My name's John and I make videos on camping, walking and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video, then please check my channel out as you may find others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with this video. The target in question is the uh, face-on spiral galaxy known as the Whirlpool Galaxy, which sits about uh, 30 million light years away. And it's one of the more uh, recognizable and iconic targets of the night sky. It's a spiral galaxy with two easily visible spiral arms. And it's got a smaller galaxy that's interacting with it that effectively is moving very slowly just behind it. The galaxy is quite easy to find. It sits in the uh, constellation of the Plough and sits just off of the uh, end of the handle of the Plough. So it's, uh, it's very straightforward to track it down. In my equipment, it's a really small target. You really um, could do with a, a big telescope to um, create a larger image. Uh, my setup that I'm using is my usual one of a um, Skywatcher EQM35 mount, a 60mm refractor and a modified DSLR camera. I'm not expecting the modification that I had done to the camera to yield me anything particularly special as that's mostly geared around taking images of nebulae and things rather than, than galaxies. There's no major benefit to uh, having an astro modified camera for that. I looked at this target last, probably two years ago, uh, and took a picture of it then, which I remember at the time going, being quite pleased with. I was hoping to improve on that uh, by mostly by taking uh, more subs or more exposures because uh, as I say I don't think the modification I've had done to my camera in the meantime is going to give me any real advantage there but hopefully uh, increased exposure time and uh, a bit more experience at processing will, will yield me a, a better result. So um, yeah I'll wind you back in time and we'll uh, get my equipment outside and take the images. So the uh, results of the evening were that I got a very nice evening sitting out under the stars. And whilst all this was going on, I took 90 minutes worth of exposures through my telescope. 
in the end I had to call it halts on the astrophotography time because the battery on the camera was uh, running dead low. So I think I got 90 one or 92 minutes worth of one minute exposures, which yeah, isn't too bad. That's more than I've taken before. I was hoping for two hours, but I often struggle to get that. So uh, yeah, anyway, I took those results, put them into my usual photo processing methodology of stacking in sequitur and then um, processing in Photoshop. I didn't bother removing the stars from this image because this particular area is not overwhelmed with stars and I felt it was quite nice to, to keep some of the stars that were there still there um, to give a little bit of context to the galaxy. Overall I was quite pleased with the result. Um, I think it's better than the, the effort that I took last year. So um, yeah I shall put that up now. I uh, hope you like it and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care, cheerio.